Hello guys and welcome. I am Ahmad Adel and this is Coast Engineering Professional. And in this video, we'll be talking about the contents of the principles of measurement international. So let's start. All right, guys, welcome back. Now we will continue our talking about POMI. And in our last video, we discussed the contents of POMI. But now we will go into a little bit of deeper detail about these contents because the contents of POMI is actually the BOQ sections that you will have in your BOQ. And these sections are starting with section GP, general principles. By the way, guys, I leave the link to the previous video in the description and in the top right corner as well. So starting with section GP, which is section for the general principles. In this section, actually, this section is a little bit different than the other sections of the BOQ because it is just a statement or some paragraphs that talks about these things. And it doesn't have the normal BOQ shape that we know, item, quantity, rate, amount, and so on. So these are just some general principles that anyone who is following POMI or preparing a BOQ in accordance with POMI should follow in each and every other section that are coming after some time. So the general principles will have articles about principles of measurement or let's call them subsections. So in a brief, they will talk about the principles of measurement, about the bill of quantities, about the measurement, items to be fully inclusive of what and such things, description of items, how to write a description for the item, work to be executed by a specialist nominated by the employer, goods, materials, or services to be provided by merchant or tradesman nominated again by the employer, work to be executed by a government or a public authority, and then we will have the day works, contingencies, and so on. So a brief of these things will be there in the general principles. And section GP will be our first section in the BOQ. So before anyone starts to price the BOQ, he will go read the GP to understand how the items in the next sections are measured. And after that, he will go and price. So it's very important to have this section in the beginning of our POMI BOQ. The next section is section A, which is general requirements. And in this section, we will find items related to the conditions of contract. If the conditions of contract somehow are impacting the cost of the project. So we will price this item here, we'll give a price to following the conditions of this particular contract. Then again, some other items related to specifications, restrictions, contractor administrative arrangements, construction plant, employer facilities, contractor facilities, temporary work, and sundry items. And the sundry items will be repeated or this word will be repeated in the next sections as well because in each and every section sometimes you have some sundry items and these basically are some items that have to be allowed for in order to get the, this section done or the items in this particular section done so this is the section a which is general requirements then section b which is site works so what can we find in this section the items that we can find in section b site works we can find site exploration generally and trial holds or pits. We have the bore holes as well, including pumping, test wells, whatever. Site preparation. There is one very important part here, guys. These items might not be, or let's say some of these items might not be applicable for the project that you are preparing a BOQ for. So that's completely fine. If one of the item is not applicable in your project this will not come in the site works or in any other division so but here the POMI wants to tell us that these items if any in your project they will come under the section B which is site works so again bore holes site preparation demolitions and alterations if you want to demolish something existing in order to start your new project so this item should come here under the site work then we have the shoring and we have the underpinning, earthworks, generally excavation, dredging, disposal, filling, piling, generally driven piling, board piling. So all types of piling. And there is a, a misconception because I have seen so many people who will 
like add the piling works to the concrete works no the piling works should come under the site works and for the shoring also for those of you who doesn't know uh, who don't know what is shoring the shoring is if you are going for a deep excavation and you want to retain the excavation sides then you go for shoring and there are so many types of shoring so if the shoring is applicable in your project again it will come under the site works so the big take from this section that let's say demolitions and alterations site preparation site exploration generally uh, trial holes all these earthworks excavation dredging disposal filling and the piling so all these things will come under the site works and actually not only that if we have also sheet piling which is one of the shoring types then performance designed piling and even the piling tests when you make piles you need to test them so these tests are items they cost money they will come under the section b site works also then paving and surfacing if you have some interlocking tiles or concrete pavers or even asphalt paving all these things will come under the site works fencing landscaping works so yes if there is a landscape in your building around the swimming pool area or something like that these things will come here in the site works as well then railway if applicable to your project tunnel excavation tunnel lining tunnel support and stabilization so all these items if any in your project they will come under the site works and as i told you before in our next videos we will take each of these sections and we will go read what is written in details what are the items and what is the unit of measurement how to write the description what to account for what to make sure that you are including in your quantity and all these things so i'm just now starting to explain the content of BOMI in a bigger uh, brief let's say so the next section is section c which is concrete works again generally generally any concrete to be used in the project should be a ready mix concrete provided by a well-established supplier and so some general understanding about the concrete works this will be a statement in the beginning of section c concrete works so it will be general and applicable for all the items that will come after that so the items that will come under concrete works or section c will be poured concrete reinforcement and shuttering which is form work then if you have any precast concrete pre-stressed concrete post tension all these related concrete works in your project will come under the section c concrete works and again you will have the sundries as i told you the sundries will be there in each of the divisions if applicable in the project so this is section c now section d which is masonry work again you will have generally related to masonry works but here you will have walls and piers like block work brick works or all, all these stuff then sills and reinforcement for sills and lentils because to do an opening maybe you need a lentil or you need a, a sill and that needs reinforcement so these items will come here although they might be a concrete lentil or concrete cells but still they will come under masonry works but most of the time now in our time they are using the gi lentils which is kind of metal so will it go to metal works or will it come here under masonry so as per pomi uh, we can put it in the masonry since it is very much related to masonry and after that you have the sundries so in the masonry works we are talking about block work and the associated works with the block works or brick walls then after that we have section e which is metal works so in the metal works we have generally again anything you want to state regarding the metal works and you have structural metal works and you have non-structural metal works as well so structural metal works if your building is having a steel structure that will carry loads so this will come under the metal works non-structural metal works you have the staircase handrail balcony handrail access ladder access hatch all these various metal works items that can be found in your project non-structural metal work for example maybe in the elevation you have some kind of architectural steel structure to receive some aluminium cladding or stone cladding or such such steel structures will come here in the metal works and plus again the handrails and this stuff after that we have section f woodworks and this is basically all the woodworks 
So you have here generally then structural timbers, boarding and the flooring. If you have parquet flooring, it should come here also. Then grounds and patterns, framework, finishing and fittings. Finishings here means, let's say, uh, wardrobes, for example, or vanity counters or kitchen cabinets. So these are wooden items, not the finishings like the ceramic and the ceiling. No, here we are talking about the woodworks and in the video where we talk about this in detail it will be more clear for you so again finishings and fittings so the fittings related to the kitchen these uh, iron mangaries and any fittings the legs and all this stuff they are also coming here and included of course they, we will not quantify them we will include them in the description of the vanity and the wardrobe and the kitchen and so on then some composite items sometimes you have some uh, metal uh, structure that will have uh, let's say a wooden shelf on top of that so this composite item because it's metal and wood so they will come both here as one item like let's say a shelf or whatever under the woodwork and then you again you will have some sundry items and any metal works associated with the woodworks like if you have any backing here under the um, kitchen top to receive the, the top or something like that. If it is metal, it will be understood and you have to mention that it is understood to be included in the linear meter rate of the kitchen or the vanity counter, for example. And uh, finally, the iron mangery is related to uh, the vanity counters and the kitchen cabinets, wardrobes and so on. So kitchen cabinets, vanity counters, wardrobes, uh, reception counter, if any, all these wooden works in the project will come under the woodworks which is section f after that we have section g which is thermal and moisture protection so here again you have generally then you have coverings and linings and you have the damp proof course and the insulation so with area waterproofing roof waterproofing substructure waterproofing landscape area waterproofing all these kinds of waterproofing balcony terrace all these waterproofing works will come under the thermal and moisture protection which is section g in our pomi boq then after that we have section h which is doors and the windows so under this section uh, from the name it's very obvious that we will have the doors windows and the screen and the iron mangaries of the doors and the windows as well so they will be included in these items then if you have any glass patent glazing and so on so these will come under section h which is doors and the windows Sometimes they call it openings, but if you want to follow POMI, POMI says that section H is called doors and windows. So after that, we have section J, which is finishes. And in the finishes, you will have generally all finishes to be blah, blah, and all this stuff. Backgrounds like the plaster and whatever wall plaster, ceiling plaster, screed below the flooring tiles and so on. Then the finishing. You have the flooring, you have the skirting, you have the walls, you have the ceiling, you have the elevation, all this stuff. So sundries also, suspended ceilings, decorations, sign writings. So all the finishes of the project. What are the finishes? The skirting, flooring, painting, walls, ceiling. In, every, in terms of everything, plaster and paint and wall tile and gypsum board and whatever is there. All the finishes in the project will come under the Section J finishes. Okay, after that we have section K, which is accessories, and then accessories will have generally again about the accessories, and mostly will have some partitions here, or let's say glass partitions in the uh, bathrooms or uh, something like that. If it's an office project and you have some partitions and so on, so these items will come under accessories. After that, section L, equipment. So whatever equipment in the project. So here they have not listed anything other than this generally. And when we go to this section, we will see more details what they have wrote there. But generally, whatever equipment, you will list them down. And I am giving an example here of the garbage chute, for example. It will come under the bill or the section L, which is equipment. After that, section M, furnishings. You have generally and you have curtain track. And if, if the contract includes supply of the furniture as well, then the furniture will come here. This number of bedrooms, this number of living rooms, this number of table, chairs, and so on. They will also come here under furnishings. If, if they are part of the project scope, 
but in most of the cases they are not part of the scope and after that we have section n which is special construction so in special construction we'll find generally enclosures in, in installations we can also find like prefabricated buildings panels and stuff like that these will come under special construction then after that we have section p which is conveying systems so under this will come again generally and sundries and works related to conveying systems like elevators escalators and so on so such things will come under the conveying systems then we have section q which is mechanical engineering in installations and this is the mechanical works in the project so again you will have here generally then the pipe work gutter work duct work for the ac and all then the equipment, cooling equipments and stuff like that, automatic controls, pumps and things like that. Connections to supply mains. If your building needs to be connected to the main network, then this will come also under the mechanical works. So insulation, including lining and the protective coverings. Then you have some sundries. You have uh, also any works that will come under mechanical engineering in installation, any mechanical works, let's say. Then after that, we have section R, which is electrical engineering in installations. And what will come after that? We'll have the generally, then we'll have main circuits, sub-main circuits, and final sub-circuits, and auxiliary in installations, accessories, control gear, equipment, connections to supply mains, sundries, and any works that should uh, come under electrical works, any electrical uh, works, let's say. Then after section R, we will have the appendix that we talked about in the last video. By the way, guys, if you like this video so far, please give it a like, thumbs up, share, comment, show us love, guys. We love you as usual. So in the amendments, anything that is not, is not measured in accordance with POMI, if you have deviated from POMI in any way in the sections that we have discussed just right now, these amendments, we should list them in this appendix. So when anyone reads the BOQ, he will understand that this BOQ is okay, prepared in accordance with POMI. However, the following points are deviated or measured differently so he can uh, understand the BOQ very well. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I am explaining each of these sections in the upcoming videos and I so much appreciate your valuable time. Just one thing before you go, because I have got this question so many times, this presentation is made via Canva and I leave the link in the description of this video so you can have a look. I love it so much. I've been using it uh, for a while now and uh, it's, a, it's a very nice software and it's online, very easy to use. So many images, texts, elements and everything that can make your presentation looks very nice and it is very easy and lovely to use. So I've kept the link for that down in the description along with our online courses as well if you would like to give them a try. And that's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next video. Cost Engineering Professional out. Bye-bye.